Responsive sites are built on flexible grids. A flexible grid means that you don't need to target every possible device size that there is, and there's no need to build a pixel-perfect layout for it either. That would pretty much be impossible, given the vast number of differently sized devices that exist, and the fact that people do not always have their browser window maximized. Their resolution is not set at a consistent value, or the orientation of a device is never set up in the same way. You see the issues very quickly. By using a flexible grid, you only need to add in a breakpoint and change the design at the point where the content starts to look bad. For example, if the line length becomes unreadably long as the screen size increases, or an image becomes squashed with two words on each line as it gets too narrow. In the early days of responsive design, our only option for performing layout was to use floats. We'd used a formula for taking layout designed using pixels and converted it into percentages. The formula was target divided by context equals results. It is likely that you will come across websites using this approach in your work, so it is worth mentioning, even though these days you would never build a modern site using a float-based flexible grid. Modern layout methods such as Flexbox and Grid are responsive by default. They all assume that you're trying to create a flexible grid, and they give you an easier way to do so. Let's look at some examples. Here I have a page with identical content. I start off with an H1 that identifies the container that we'll be working on, and then each item is a section with a class of container and a unique class assigned to the container. Within the container, there are two articles, and the articles just have some text inside of them. And as you can see, I do this three times, once for my fixed width, once again for Flexbox, and once again for Grid. So far, I haven't applied any of the layout CSS yet, but I just wanted to introduce you to the HTML. Here's the CSS that I have specified so far. I have some basic declarations that are styling the fonts and setting some background colors on both the articles and the containers so that we can see where everything is. It is worth noting that as of right now, my page is responsive. It's just not optimal. As you can see, when my page width gets fairly wide, the line length of the text becomes far too long to comfortably read. So even though websites do act in a responsive manner by default, they're not always set up in an optimal way. Let's see how we can change this. We'll start off with trying to get our fixed width layout to be a two column layout, and we'll try to get it to be responsive. Now there are a number of ways that you can accomplish this. What we'll do to start off with is we're going to go ahead and we're gonna target the articles that are children of fixed width. So I will use dot fix, dot I1, and dot I2. I'm going to tell the I1 element to float on the left, and I'm going to tell the I2 element to float on the right. Now, as you can see, if I save and refresh, nothing really happens other than the container has now collapsed behind the two articles. The reason that these are not sitting side by side is because they are block level elements, so they take up 100% of the available space. If we want them to sit side by side, I'll need to make sure that they have width declarations applied to them so they can sit side by side. So we'll give the first one 30% and the second one 70%. If we save and refresh, you can see that these items are going to sit side by side. Now, because the items are being floated, it has impacted the content that follows. So we'll need to clear those floats. And I'm using the method that I shared with you in an earlier exercise, where we're going to target the pseudo element of after, and we're going to attach the clear to that. Now when I refresh, you can see that I do have a two column layout. And right now, my columns are responsive. Now I would like to have a little bit of gutter spacing between the columns. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to reduce the width, because currently the width is 100%. I'll have to bring this down. So if I make this 67% for the article on the right, you can see that now I do have a gutter. And as I mentioned, my layout is responsive. There are some issues with our layout when the page gets narrow. You can see that the columns get too thin and the content is not optimal. 
We'll learn how to fix this using breakpoints in an upcoming lecture. But for right now, let's just focus on the layout. So I did successfully create a layout that is responsive and it is two column, but I had to create quite a bit of code to do this. Let's move on and see how we can do this using Flexbox. If I want to create a similar layout using Flexbox, I'm going to go ahead and use display flex on the containing element. I also want a gap to appear between my items, so I'll use the gap property and we'll just set that to one rem. If we save now and we refresh, you can see very quickly I've created a two column layout and the elements are going to appear side by side. The code that I had to add was much more succinct and it was easier for me to create this two column layout. Now if I want to change the behavior of the columns, making something more similar to what I had above, I can use my flex property on the items. I'll target the first item and I'll give it a flex of one. Right now I'm using the flex shorthand. When I set this to one, it sets the flex grow to one. Once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a selector for item two. Here, we're going to assign a flex of two. When we assign a flex of two, we're saying that the second item will take up twice as much space as the others, or at least it will try based on its content. When I refresh the page, you can see I have something closer to what I had above. The first item is taking up approximately a third of the space, while the second item is taking up two thirds. Now it does take up slightly more space because it also is based on the content that sits within it, but it does work in a similar fashion as what we created with our fixed width, and this was easier to rein in. If we want to do something similar for our grid item, it gets even easier. All I have to do is target the grid container and I need to tell it to have a display of grid. Then I'm going to use my grid template columns and we will use the FR unit. I'm going to assign one FR to the first article and two FRs to the second article. Once again, I'll use the gap property to create a gutter between the two columns. Now, when I refresh my page, you can see that the grid item looks very similar to Flexbox. As I resize my page, the Flexbox and the grid items are going to grow and shrink in a similar fashion. As you can see, the code that I needed to apply the multi-column layout to the grid item is even less than what we had to do above. Now we do still have the problem of the line length getting very long when my page is wide. We can prevent that from happening by using a max width declaration on the container. I'm going to apply this to all of the containers, so I'll go up to my general dot container selector and I'm going to add a max width and we'll just say a thousand pixels. If we save the page and we refresh, you can see that now all of my items are going to max out when they get to a thousand pixels. It doesn't matter how wide my page is, they will never get larger than a thousand pixels. As my page gets smaller, they will shrink. And that's because we're currently we are using max width. Max width means maximum width, but we haven't specified anything about the minimum width. If this declaration simply said width, that is an absolute value. And if we resize our page, you can see that when the page is large, it looks similar. But when my page gets more narrow, I do actually end up with horizontal scrolling. When we're building in a responsive way, we never want to use these absolute values in regards to width properties. They will make it so that you have horizontal scrolling, and we want to avoid that at all costs. So when we use the maximum width, that's a better way. We could either do that, or we could use a percent based value. Percent based values will also be responsive. They will, however, continue to grow and they won't max out like the max width does. Hopefully this example has shown you several ways in which you can create flexible and fluid grid based layouts. Clearly Flexbox and Grid are the best ways to be able to create these sorts of layouts. They're very simple 
and we have a lot more flexibility in the way that the items are going to interact with each other and create the spacing between the items. Flexible grids are one of our components of responsive web design. When we pair them together with other aspects of responsive design, wonderful things can happen.